This section heading is called Executing a UDP Flood Attack. So what we're going to do in this section here is we're going to execute that attack from our Kali end station against the web server over here. So now there's one thing that I need to point out inside of this topology before we begin. We can see this firewall icon over here. So this firewall is actually disabled. So the only kind of security controls that are in place from the source to the destination are those that are offered up by the operating systems kernel. And basically that's it. So now in order to analyze to see if this attack is successful or not, we're going to start up some packet capturing software on the back end web server. So what we're going to do is we're going to establish an SSH session from this Kali end station to the server. So we're going to type SSH to support at yourbank.com. So now the packet capturing software that we're going to use is going to be TCP dump. So we're going to type sudo TCP dump. We're going to start up this software on the eat zero interface. We're going to disable DNS lookups and we're going to apply a filter for UDP traffic. We're going to redirect all of the successful matches into a file by the same name. So now that that's started up, we're going to open up another terminal and we'll execute the attack. So we're going to be using HPing3. So HPing3, we're going to send the packets as fast as possible. We're going to have them come from a random source. We're going to send UDP packets. They're going to go to the destination port of 80 and to the destination host of yourbank.com. So now we're going to let this run for about, I'd say about 30 seconds or so. So we want to verify to see if in fact this attack is successful or not. Okay, so now I'm going to issue a control C. And in that time frame, we can see over here that I've sent around 2,258,000 packets. So that's quite a bit. And I let that run for about 45 seconds. Okay. So now I'm going to close this terminal. And what we're going to do is we're going to analyze from the back end over here. So I'm going to issue another break. So control C. And what we're finding inside of this output over here is the one that actually matters is this one down here. So we can see that 11 packets were dropped by the interface. And this is because the interface was too busy. So it didn't have enough resources to actually process these 11 packets. So we were essentially denying service to them. These other numbers up here pertain to our TCP packet capturing software. So these are the number of packets that were received on the interface. The ones that it couldn't process on that interface are right here. So these are the numbers that were kind of dropped. So your TCP dump packet capturing software has a buffer. And if it can't successfully process those packets pack, uh, fast enough, then what it does is it drops them. The ones that it successfully processed and deemed a match to our filter are right here. So these are the ones that are captured and actually redirected into that file. So now we can verify that we have close to this number up here. So if we do a WC-L, now you would expect the number to be an exact match, but what I'm finding is because we're in the virtual environment here, it's actually giving some kind of erroneous traffic in there. So we can see over here, I've got 308, and you can see I've got about 30 something extra lines. So if we do a tail, to print out the last 20 lines within this file. So tail space UDP. What you're going to find is that it's coming from a random source, just like we specified. We're seeing sockets in here. So these are IP port combinations. So it's coming from a random source. And then on the destination, we've got the socket for our web server, which is the IP address and port combination, which is 80. We can also see that these are all UDP packets. Now the extra traffic 
that I was referring to is based off of our virtual environment. And again, I can tell that because of these IPs down here.